Hello everyone, welcome to Relationship Talk with Sharonda. Of course, I am Sharonda and I am your host. And we are coming off of a Who Dead winning weekend. Yes, it is a beautiful day here in South Louisiana because our saints have been cutting up. And yesterday we whooped the cowgirls. So, you know, I look, Auntie thoroughly enjoyed herself yesterday. But overall, I had a wonderful weekend. On Friday, I got the opportunity to see uh, Corey Holcomb. Um, Daddy and I went to San Antonio to see him um, earlier in the year. And he so happened to be here at the Baton Rouge River Center. So we got tickets for that show. And let me just say this, because he has a podcast called 5150 that we both watch. Um, Corey Holcomb is not for people that are sensitive. For one, I'm one of those people, I am not sensitive at all. Meaning that I can hear things and not hear things and certain things that people may not feel like are funny. I feel like it's funny. I love dark comedy, dark humor, uh, jokes about the stuff that you're probably not about supposed to joke about. The and You know how you always see the little memes like if you laugh at this, you going to hell. I'm probably one of the people that's going to be in hell <laughs> laughing because if it's funny to me, it's funny to me. But I thoroughly enjoyed um, his uh, tour that he brought here to Baton Rouge. He did a great job, especially being that I seen him early in the year. And then I seen him um, this weekend and it was two completely different shows. So I was really pleased about that because it was all new raw material. Um, Saturday, I went to support my man, my man, my man. He is coaching um, again. So I went to support them and their game. And then Sunday, it was all about the Saints. So I had a great weekend. Date night football and more football. But as I promised, we was going to get off into this comprehensive sex education lesson. Last week, we talked about the vulva. We talked about the clitoris. We talked about the vagina. We talked about the urethra. We talked about the vaginal lips, the libya. We talked about, the, and in other words, we talked about everything in its function. Today, we're going to be talking about erections. Mm-hmm. So that means that we're going to be talking about the penis, but we are going to specifically focus on erections because there are different types of erections and that's what we're going to learn about. So I hope you all are ready. Um, I did not bring a display because I did not want this video to get flagged, um, but we're going we're gonna to get off into it. So let's talk about it. Um, one of the first signs to let a male know an adult male, rather, know that he is healthy is that he wakes up with what we call morning wood, right? That is an erection uh, where he wakes up in the morning and he is li literally already hard. This is before he even gets up to urinate, he's already hard. This lets us know that he's healthy, that the testosterone levels are where they need to be. Um, and it also lets us know that he has good circulation, that he is heart healthy, right? Our body gives us the indication that things are going the way it's supposed to go. If you are a male and you are waking up and you are not having morning wood, that's an indication that, hey, I might need to be making me a doctor's appointment because there's an issue with circulation. What causes issues with circulation? We have been over this over and over. Obesity, right? I'm looking at myself picking up weight and I was literally getting dressed this morning and I was like, you know what? Um, because you are working, it's not an excuse not to exercise. Y'all, these are pep talks I'm giving to myself. It's not an excuse not to exercise. You're going to have to find a way to fit it in. And, and uh, in the past, I would just exercise. I didn't really have to do anything nutrition wise. But being that I am sitting most of the day, then I need to get back to my intermediate fasting. So between intermediate fasting and exercise at least three times a week, I should be able to get this weight back under control. But again, for our men, because that's what we're talking about, obesity, right? That is a huge, huge indicator uh, that, it's, that we, we're eventually going to have some health problems. Some people carry their weight well. The taller you are, the heavier you can be. 
But if you're shorter, you have to really, really be mindful of your weight. Um, so we had obesity as the at the top of the list, right? Um, and y'all know women taking these man bods these days, they ain't, they don't care about a lit, the lit extra fluff around the midsection. But that's exactly what we don't want the weight to be is in the midsection. Because when you sit in the midsection, you're setting yourself up for diabetes, being insulin resistant. Okay. Then we're dealing with high blood pressure. And now we're dealing with high cholesterol. So all of these things can impact a man having morning wood. So if you're not waking up with morning wood, you need to be making a doctor's appointment. Okay. So let's talk about the three different types of erection, even before we get into the product, even before we get into the sale. Okay. Um, most times when we think about erections, we think about sex. That's kind of the way we pair it. Like when a person gets an erection, they obviously wants to have sex. But the thing about erections is they can happen without any type of sexual activity or sexual stimulation. Okay. Now, there are erections that can happen because you are sexually stimulated, but not all erections are from being sexually stimulated. So, reflexogenic. That is an erection that happens when something touches the penis, right? It triggers arousal and you actually start to see and experience the growth. What could we possibly be talking about? This is the one that we see when people masturbate. Um, if a partner touches it or sometimes if something textured touches it like a different uh, type of fabric that you normally don't wear or something like that. But this this um, erection specifically comes from some type of touch, whether it's the person himself masturbating, whether it is a partner touching them, or whether it's some type of fabric or material that is touching up against the shaft. This will uh, basically trigger the erection to come. And then we have the psychogenic, I'm sorry, the psychogenic erection, right? This is fantasy thought, right? You can literally hear a certain song that will take you to a certain place, right? You can watch porn. You can see a magazine or you can actually see an actual person, right? And these things are thought provoking, which triggers the erection, okay? Um... And these erections happen without physical touch, meaning you ain't got to do nothing, right? Um, nocturnal erections. These are erections that happens when you are asleep. They occur all throughout the night. Um, my research indicated that men get between three to five erections a night in their sleep, literally doing nothing. And sometimes their partners will see them get the erection and they might automatically go, well, what the hell he dreaming about? Or what the hell he thinking about? But these are just the things that are happening in their sleep and their body's just functioning the way it's supposed to function. How do we know this? Because even babies can get erections. Even babies in the womb can get erections, right? And, and those erections are not sexual at all. It's just literally the way the body functions. Pretty much it. Now, there is the flip side to it, right? Most times when we have an erection, it's uh, welcomed. Most times. But then we have some erections that are not necessarily welcomed. And sometimes these erections are very, very painful. And I have literally um, had my pronunciation app say this word over and over and over and over and over again. And I prayed it out on Chop It Up. Um, prior prism. That is a prolonged erection of the penis and you get a full or partial erection for four hours or beyond, okay? And this is not caused by sexual stimulation. This happens when blood fills the penis, but the blood has no way to exit the penis, okay? And that erection, because I love to give y'all a new word, that erection is called prior prism, okay? Uh, P-R-I-A-P-I-S-M. 
that's the way uh that's the spelling of the word so i love to learn a new word y'all um so how do we maintain healthy erections right i told you number one keep the weight under control number two we want to make sure that we're eating a healthy diet right um keeping up with our bmi to understand that you know it's okay to have some weight but we don't want to be extremely overweight. I know here in South Louisiana, uh, in down south period, we love heaviness. We celebrate it. But that's not necessarily a, a good thing for us as a people because we tend to die very early. And a lot of it is directly related to our weight. Okay. Um, take steps to manage your blood pressure, your cholesterol. Um, and make sure that if you take your medications, make sure you take those medications the way you're supposed to do not, not take the medications because the medications keep you from getting the erection. Okay. In other words, take the medications, get yourself healthy. And then once you become healthy, the erections will come. Okay. Uh, exercise regularly. Again, most health experts tells us 20 to 30 minutes a day, at least three times a week. Um, misuse of drugs, uh, smoking, and I guess drinking more than on an occasion because, you know, some people, let me think, cause you know, I'm a, I'm a think, I don't think, yep, this weekend. Oh yes, I did. I was trying to think if I had anything to drink this weekend. I didn't drink anything Friday night, uh, when we were on date night, I didn't drink anything. I didn't drink anything Saturday uh, for the game. Oh, but when I went to go watch them Saints, I did drink a rum punch, right? So I would say, um, I don't know what occasionally is for you, but I would say I know on the weekends, I typically take a drink or two, uh, but I don't ever allow myself to just get so toe up to where I can't function or anything like that. But I don't, I think, uh, they're talking about the people who are alcoholics. I think sometimes alcoholics may have more of an issue with um, the erections than people who are trying to be healthy, right? Um, reducing stress, this is huge. The most stress that I see people, uh, most of the stress that I see that people have today is they've extended themselves financially, meaning that a lot of them are living way above their means, trying to keep up. And that in the, that in itself um, creates stressors, you know. Um, other stressors are basically just going out into the world, having to deal with regular stuff, not necessarily having the support that we need and want. Um, I mean, it's a, a, a huge list of things that can stress you, right? Um, but I know for a fact when I'm talking to couples, finances is normally at the top of that list. And then from finances, meaning when the money ain't right, people don't want to have sex. And that's how they end up coming to me. So, um, you know, we want to keep things to where we can afford them and to where we're not like worried about all kind of stuff. So let's get off into the product. First of all, let's get off into our sale this week, right? So I have pulled down the Nud Gummy sale along with the honey. Um, that sale is no longer... This week's sales is four for 20. 400 packs for $20. That is the sale. 400 packs for $20. That is the sale. But we do have some other uh, items that are on the website that you may want to take a look at. Uh, for my people who are experiencing ED, erectile dysfunction, and you, and you do have high blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol, and you're on medication and you do not want to take another, a medi another medication, but you can get the erection on your own. It's just that you can't maintain it because you have some people, they can actually get hard, right? But they can't maintain it, meaning that they can't stay hard. And they take your medications and the last thing they want to do is take another medication or take another enhancement because everybody's different when it comes to their body. If you can get the erection, the cock ring is going to help you keep the erection. Okay. If you need instructions on how to use this cock ring, 
flip the pack to the back and it's going to actually give you a picture diagram of how to use the cock ring. When you go on my website, you want to look for the heavy duty cock ring. If you can get the erection, take a little lubricant, put it on your shaft, roll this cock ring all the way down to the base. As long as you're wearing this cock ring, you're going to keep and maintain your erection. Okay? So this is one thing that you can do. The other thing that you can do is you can do rhino. Okay? I have two different types of rhino. I have a seven-day rhino pill and I have a 10-day rhino pill. What does that mean? This means that no, you're not going to be walking around all day with an erection. But when it's time to perform that thing gone thing, I'm going to say it again. No, you will not be walking around with an erection all day. This is a seven-day pill. This is a 10-day pill. But when it's time for you to perform that thing gone thing, because it is in your system, and this is a time-release capsule. And as you can see, the capsules look really big, but there's a pill inside the capsule, okay? Take it, and you want to drink a full bottle of water when you take it so that it flushes itself all the way through your system. So, yes, we do have Rhino 17, and then we do have Rhino 10. Oh, that one? You know, I'm sorry, Rhino 24K. This one is a 7-day pill, and this is a 10-day pill. Both are on my website, okay? And, of course, we have the honey that you can put in your food, that you can put in your drinks, or you can eat it directly out the pack. It's completely up to you, okay? But, again, honey this week is on sale Four for $20, okay? This is a great deal. You cannot beat it. And what does it do? It helps with all of these. Everything that I'm showing you helps with circulation and blood flow to the shaft, okay? If the blood can flow to the shaft, then you can get the erection. If the blood cannot flow to the shaft, you will not get the erection, or at least not the one that you're looking for. Because, you know, as women, we be liking them erections that's hard. Them, them, uh, I always, I had a customer that used to come into my store and he used to call my pills and my enhancer Sweet 16. And I used to say, Mr. Chad, why you call it Sweet 16? He said, because that's what it reminds him of. He was getting the erections that he was getting as a young boy when he was 16. And he was saying as a grown older man, he's now able to achieve those type of erections again. So shout out to you, Mr. Chad. Y'all, I miss seeing a lot of my customers. I had customers that came in every week, regular customers. Um, and it's a lot of them that I um, have just literally, after COVID, things changed so much. I was checking on customers and finding out people were sick and had them died and all kind of stuff. I was like, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. But, yeah, these uh, enhancers gives you that type of erection that you had when you were sweet 16, if you can remember what that felt like, okay? So as you can see, ain't she got bricks? She, she read it, she got the honey on deck, right? So that's gonna wrap me up as far as my product. And now we're gonna get off into this real life stuff and then I'm gonna be wrapped up. Let me check the time. All right, I got about five minutes left. All right, so of course I'm always scrolling on the internet, reading different stuff, reading, um, and this has nothing to do with erections, what I'm about to talk about, but definitely real life because a lot of y'all like my, my life lessons. Y'all like them. And there was this woman and she basically went viral for saying that women want to be mindful about the, the amount of kids that they're having because it's the more kids you have, the harder it is to date. I remember being a young mom that was married, right? And as much as my mom loved the fact that I was married, loved the fact that I had a family, um, and she thought it was beautiful, I've told y'all several times that I had a mom that was very, very realistic. And the thing is, see, I'm an only child. I don't have other siblings from my dad or my mom. It's just me, Right? And she told me when I was having my second child, right? She said, like, like I'm, let me tell you something. She said, I don't want you to take this the wrong way. She said, you might want to pump your brakes right now when it come down to having all these babies. And I was looking like, huh? She was like, 
I know that we don't intend for your marriage to end in divorce. She said, but the reality is most of them do end in divorce. That's just the reality. And if it so happens to end in divorce, you don't want it to be hard for you to find you somebody else. It's a lot, it's a lot harder to find somebody else when you got a whole bunch of kids. She was like, when you got one or two, it's easy to find somebody that want to deal with you, be with you, help you with you one or two, and you live your life with you one or two. She was like, when you go up and you get to having three, four, five, six, seven children, she was like, don't nobody want no woman with all them children like that. Now, this is the thing. I always have the women on my page. They get the screaming. You know, even when you're trying to give this type of wisdom, because they have large families and they have three, four, five, six, seven, eight children or whatever. And they say, I ain't had nobody. I ain't had no problem finding nobody to take on me and my children or whatever the circumstances are. But the thing is, this is the reality. We all know that they're a different caliber of men, okay? You have some men out here that are really on their shit, that are really doing well financially, right? who enjoy a certain amount of freedom, meaning freedom that allows them to travel, to move around, to do all kinds of stuff. And the thing is, when you have a large family, and it's no slight, this is just the wisdom that was given. It's easy to find somebody to babysit one or two kids, especially when you got small kids, right? But when you have a whole tribe of kids, it's hard to find somebody that want to take that on and babysit all them kids so you can go fly all over the world with this person. That's just the truth. Or you have uh, partners who enjoy spontaneous sex, meaning I want to be able to walk through the door and start getting it in and doing this and doing that. When you have a lot of kids, again, it's hard to get rid of all of them at one time. Most times when you have um, large families like that, you don't have a household where, where it's just empty at certain points. You have to go get a room to do all of that. In other words, it's kind of hard to be spontaneous when you have large families, right? Another thing is most times when you have large families, some, a lot of the times, all the kids are not for the same person. So that means that this man knows that he got to come in and he got to deal with all of these different kids. Not only that, but all of these different dads and their personalities, right? Which means that things can get messy, when you're dealing with all of these different uh, dads, okay? Then there's a financial component to it. Meaning, you know, I can't just give you a little $30 and say, go take and get these churn of uh, burger from McDonald's and, and you ain't got to worry about cooking for the night. When you got a whole tribe, $20, $30 ain't going to go nowhere with that to try to free this woman up to say, don't cook. I want you to be able to have time for me. You're going to spend about $100. In other words, you're going to spend more. I was talking to uh, daddy yesterday and I was saying, okay, when I go to the grocery store and I get a pack of steaks, most times they cut it to where it's three steaks in a pack, three ribeyes in a pack. Typically, I'm paying between, depending on, if the steaks are not on sale, I'm paying between $25 and $30 for that one pack of steaks for all three of us, which is fine, Right? But if my household consisted of myself, my other kids, all three of my kids, and my man, there's no way that we're about to do a steak dinner for less than $50. It's just not about to happen. Because versus us buying this one pack of steaks, now we got to buy two packs of steaks to make sure that everybody get one. So when people talk about things, and I'm talking about a financial component, I'm not like some people because they get assistance with food stamps and certain things like that. Uh, they get Medicaid and they don't have copays and things like that. They don't think about the financial component to a lot of things. But a person like myself that literally pays for everything, I'm always thinking about the financial component. And, I, and my partner is always thinking about the financial component. Um, another thing is when you have large families like that. Sometimes, most of the times, a lot of the times, um, you don't have a situation where a lot, all of the fathers are active, right? So that person got to come in and not only do they have to be a man to this woman, but a lot of times these women are looking for somebody that's going to come in and be a positive male figure or stepfather to these kids, right? So these are the conversations that we don't like having, but these are real life conversations 
that have to be had. And in today's world and in today's economy, it's just easier to date women that do not have kids or who only have one or two kids. For example, with me, I have three kids, but two of my kids are adults. I only have one kid that's here at the house with me, and that child is about to get ready to emancipate in the next few years, right? So yeah, I'm not gonna, and then this child is older, so I don't have to worry about babysitters and all of this kind of stuff like that. And then I date men that have their own homes, so I don't have to worry about, can we be spontaneous because a kid is here? Or, the, you know, those type of things we don't have to worry about. So I ain't talking about, you know, meeting the type of men, because some women say, I ain't never had no problem with finding a man. A lot of women don't, not if they gotta move in with you. Not if they coming in there over there to eat your kids' snacks. And they literally coming begging and bumming. You got them kind of men out there in the world too. And women scoop them up. The ones that love to beg and bum. I'm not talking about those type of men. Those are not the type of men that I'm interested in to have in my life, right? I enjoy very smart, successful men. And when you're dealing with a certain caliber of man, it makes it extremely hard when you have a large family. And that's just the truth. Right? Like I said, I like men with their own space. Right? Meaning, you ain't looking to come move into mine. Because you got your own. And I got my own. And you pay for it and you maintain it. A lot of these men that these women are taking in ain't never had a lease in their name before. Ain't never even had a light bill in their name before. And when they ain't living with a woman, they living with their mom or their sister. These type of men exist in the world. And women are scooping them up. And it's nothing wrong if that's what you like. But you do have some women like myself that are very selective about the partners that they choose to be with. Okay? All right. So, again, my honey is 4 for 20 this week. All the other sales have been pulled down. Auntie is about to get ready to start this work week. Um, I got a whole week to drag the cowgirls, uh, and next Sunday we play the Eagles. The Saints play the Eagles. So I'm looking forward to that game. Uh, it is another early game. I love it when the games are early because we get to have our game and then we get to party. We don't have to have it late and then party late. We get to have our game early and then we get to party all day long. So yes, I absolutely love it. Uh, with that being said, that's going to wrap me up for today, y'all. You all be blessed. Y'all enjoy the rest of your day. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe.